something wrong, Superintendent? Absolutely not, Robert. Please proceed. Miss Fuge, we're here to help you. No need to be afraid. Delibrium obscurum, as diagnosed. Get on with it. Miss Fuge, no. no one is out to get you. You're safe. This is part of your treatment here at Blackwell's Island. You do want to get well, don't you? Feel better now, don't you? Mama. Doctor, can you hear? What's happening? I don't know if I have enough. Talk to me! Enough! Send her to the crematorium. I will make out the papers. I wasn't always known as Nellie Bly. I was born Elizabeth Cochran during the Civil War, outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Since I was a child, I wanted to be a reporter. It had been two years since I wrote the Pittsburgh Dispatch to criticize an article that mocked women looking for work. The managing editor was so impressed with my response that he made the rare choice of hiring me, a female, to work as a reporter. You see, in 1887, journalism was a man's world, an exclusive, albeit, crusty, cigar, and spittoon-filled club, where women were not welcome. Nellie Bly? We were considered too dainty and fragile for such work. So how did I, the fabled mere woman, fair sex of faint heart, become the most known investigative reporter in the world? Well, I have always believed that energy rightly applied and directed will accomplish anything. Nellie Bly? I'd like to introduce you to our publisher, Joseph Pulitzer. Very nice to meet you, Mr. Pulitzer. It is a great honor. Bly is not your real name. No. Nellie Bly is my pen name. She's small. But plucky. Is that enough? 
Her recommendation is impeccable. Her reputation's outstanding. I believe she was made for this. She is an unknown. If this fails, it is not her reputation that is on the line. I would like to thank you for the advance, Mr. Cockrell. I am ready for any opportunity the World newspaper has for me. I've spoken with Mr. Pulitzer about some of the ideas you suggested. Oh? Would you have really gone up in a balloon? Without question. You gave the assignment to a male reporter instead. I would have drawn greater sensation. No doubt. But we have another idea. The World newspaper would like you to infiltrate one of the asylums for the insane in New York City. To report on the treatment of the patients? Yes. Which asylum? Blackwell's Island Lunatic Asylum for Women. To get in, I will have to be committed. We can find a doctor who'll be willing to sign the papers. No, I'll have to do it myself. The only sure way I am not revealed is absolutely everyone must believe I am insane. How will you get me out after I once get in? I do not know. It would be quite dangerous. I have faith in my abilities. No doubt you have faith in your abilities to deceive the insanity experts. I fear they cannot be deceived. I will teach myself to be mad. It is vital that you not be revealed. Your very life may be threatened. I'm not afraid of danger. And how do we truly test the competency of the doctors and nurses? The answer is simple. I will be insane long enough to get committed, but from the moment I enter the insane ward on the island, I will talk and act just as I do in ordinary life. Then it is decided. It is decided. I shall feign insanity and have myself committed to Blackwell's lunatic asylum. Yes. Uh, just one more thing. What is it? I am afraid of that chronic smile of yours. I will smile no more. After receiving my instructions, I returned to my boarding house, and in front of the mirror, I began to practice the role in which I was to make my debut, to convince the world that I was insane. I turned the gas up high in hopes that it would raise my courage against the thought that I was about to be locked away in a madhouse with no clear way to get out. I quietly bade farewell to the precious comforts of modern civilization. It may be for days. It may be for longer. I took a last fond look at myself as a sane woman. Who could tell but that the strain of playing crazy might turn my own brain, and I would never get back. I decided to start my mission at a temporary home for working women. My objective was to make this house full of women believe me crazy, so they would never rest until I was out of their reach and in secure quarters. Well, what do you want? Uh, I want to stay here for a few days, if you can accommodate me. Well, I have no single rooms. We are so crowded. But if you will occupy a room with another girl, I shall grant you that much. Oh, I shall be glad of that. Uh, how much do you charge? 30 cents a night. Come 
So now I was amongst these honest workers, the most deserving of women. I selected them as the ones to work out my salvation, or more properly speaking, my condemnation and conviction into the insane asylum. Have you some sorrow or trouble? No. Why? Oh, because I can see it in your face. What kind of work are you trying to get? <laughs> I never worked. I don't know how. But you must learn. All these women work. Do they? Oh, why they all look horrible to me. Just like crazy women. There are so many crazy people about. <laughs> it was amusing to see what a remarkably short time it took to get up from her chair and hurriedly move away from the crazy girl. I knew my performance had hit home. So I said to the supervisor that it's just not right to keep this place so cold. I mean, if they want us to produce faster, they really ought to invest in a couple sticks of wood for the stove. <laughs> don't you agree? I don't know. I cannot say. Oh, yes. I mean, I mean, no. I don't know. Oh, is it suddenly hot in here? I know nothing about the boats to Boston. I have to find my trunks. It's time for bed, ladies. Oh, I'm afraid. Can I not sit by the stairs no. tonight? No. Everyone in the house will think that you're crazy. This way, Miss Brown. No. This is my room. I will not stay with that crazy woman for all the money of the Vanderbilts. My act was working. The women were afraid of me. I can't have her scaring you all off. I'll send for a policeman and have her taken away at once. Go fetch a policeman from the corner. No, she can stay in my room. There's only one bed. I don't have time to set up another. That'll be fine. Only this one woman among the crowd, pretty and delicate Mrs. Kane, Suit yourself. displayed true compassionate feeling. <laughs> she smoothed my hair and talked as soothingly to me as a mother would do to a sick child. I don't remember much about my mother, but I always remember her combing through my hair and getting me ready for bed. Let's get you out of that dress and ready for bed. No! They are going to kill me. Who's going to kill you? I will not take off my dress. Perhaps if you just lie down on the bed with your clothes on. No! Here, look. I will lay down on the bed with my clothes on as well. Be ready with you. I will not. Do try to rest, dear. Though Mrs. Kane grew more and more anxious, Sit and rest, poor thing. she was as sympathetic as ever. Poor soul, how cruelly I tortured her. I have trunks. Where are they? I want them. I want them. And what a kind heart she had. I'll see if there's any word on it.
much I admired her courage and kindness. How I longed to reassure her and whisper that I was not insane. How I hoped that if any poor girl should ever be so unfortunate as to be what I was pretending to be, she might meet with one who possessed the same spirit of human kindness as Mrs. Ruth Kane. Yes, I believe the poor dear is insane. I want you to take her quietly. If she don't come along quietly, I will drag her through the streets. I certainly wish to avoid raising a scandal outside. There's no need for that kind of brutality. I'll handle this. We'll take her along quietly. Well, hello there, sweet girl. If you would like to come with me, I'll help you find your lost effects. Who are you? I don't know you. He's a policeman, love. He means you no harm. He's going to help you find your things. I don't want to go with him alone. I do not know him. You don't have to go with him if you don't want to. <laughs> I will help you find your trunks. We can find them together. You will? Of course. They couldn't have gotten very far. Now you just come along with me. Follow us at a respectable distance. These policemen are here to help you. The skies were overcast as I was taken to the Essex Market Police Court, where at last the question of my sanity, or insanity, was to be decided. Here's the express house. We're all here to help you find your trunks. Have all these people lost their trunks? Yes, nearly all of them have lost their trunks. No, I don't know what to do with the child. She must be taken care of. Send her to the island. No, oh, don't, don't. She is a lady. It would kill her to go to the island. Well, perhaps you're right. There is some foul work here. I believe this girl has been drugged and brought to the city. Make out the papers. We'll send her to Bellevue for examination. and Probably in a few days, the effect of the drug will wear off and uh, she'll be able to tell us a story that will be startling. I do not wish to stay here any longer to be gazed at. Take her to my office. Put out your tongue. I said, put out your tongue. I don't want to. But you are sick, and I am a doctor. I am not sick. I just want my trunks. Open. Take a deep breath. Right. Look at my hand. Follow my hand. And again. I believe she's taken Belladonna. I'm not in the least ill. I've never been sick, and no one has a right to detain me when I want to find my trunks. I want to go home. And I will take you home. I am so glad to go with you. I began to have more confidence in my own ability to play a madwoman now, since one judge, one doctor, and a mass of people had pronounced me insane. I shall never forget that ride to the insane pavilion at Bellevue Hospital. It was at the hospital that I was to be processed and my fate sealed regarding my commitment to Blackwell's Island Asylum. This girl is to wait here. Oh, please do not go. Please do not leave me here, I beg you. Or oh, take me with you. You said that you would take me home. I have to assist with an amputation. Those noisy carpenters. I do not want to stay here without you. I'll be back soon, I promise. Take me home? 
Yes. At last, I found myself an occupant of an insane asylum. I already felt like a woman condemned. Hello. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Nellie Brown. I'm here waiting for a nice gentleman who's going to come take me home. This is not a place that you want to wait long if you don't need to be here. This is a place of the sick. Are you sick? Yes. How did you come to be here? I was working as a chambermaid in a large house. When my health gave way, I was sent to a sister. Is there anything wrong with you mentally? No. The doctors have been asking me many curious questions and confusing me, but there's nothing wrong with my brain. Do you know that only insane people are sent to this pavilion? Yes. Let me hold the baby. The doctor is here. He wishes to speak with you. How are you feeling, Nellie? Oh, I feel all right. But you are sick, you know. Am I? Yes. Tell me, why did you think the women in the temporary home were going to harm you? Temporary home? I... What temporary you home? You did not stay in a temporary home for working women? No. I have never stayed in such a place. What was the name of the judge presiding over your case? I do not remember going in front of a judge. I see. What is your father's name? I cannot remember. What is your mother's name? I cannot remember. Any brothers or sisters, aunts or uncles? I cannot remember. Calm down, Miss Brown. Calm down. It's fine. Do you not have a lover that cast you aside? No. And on what street was the temporary home you stayed at located? I did not stay at any temporary home. All right, that's fine, Miss Brown. You try to get some rest, all right? Not once did it cross the admitting doctor's mind that I might not be telling him the truth. Based on such an examination, I doubt any doctor could tell whether people are insane or not. is for everyone's safety. Miss Scott, Miss Scott, there's a gentleman here from the Sun newspaper to interview Miss Brown. No one is to see the transfer patients. Yes, ma'am. I had to summon all of my courage as I was marched to the boat to Blackwell's asylum. An insane place where women never get out.
come with me. up with fellow creatures who were truly insane. I had recently been ill. It lasted so long I suffered from nervous stability, but I only had fevered thinking while I was ill. I do not belong here. I have recovered. I will decide your diagnosis. Please, try all your tests for insanity, if you have any. I do not belong here. Everyone who enters here makes that claim. Please give me justice. Justice? Justice refers to the law. You speak as if you're entering a prison. But this is a hospital. We're here to help you. Please, I beg you. You need not worry, Miss Mayard. We'll get you the help you need. I'm so frightened. He didn't listen to me at all. Mrs. Louis Chance. I will try by every means to be of benefit to you. What can you do? <laughs> Doctor, please do not understand what is Your going on. Your name? I speak here kein English. Miss Group, you're German. Ask her what her husband does. Was is dein Ehrgatte von Beruf? Er ist Künstler. Her husband is a, a craftsman. Very well. Mrs. Louise Shans is admitted to Blackwell's Island in South. No, this is not right. <laughs> Can you tell me your name? Yes. What is it? You don't know. Or are you seeing if I know? What are you writing? I ask the questions. Like the others, the poor girl was condemned to the insane asylum for life. And Neville. Without being given one feeble chance to prove her sanity. Lily Brown, the doctor wants you. As according to my plan, the moment I entered Blackwell's, I dropped my act of insanity and acted just as I do in everyday life. What is your name? Nellie Brown. Mm, what's the color of her eyes? Gray. What is your age? 19 last May. When do you get your next pass? Next Saturday is my next day off. You will go into town? Yeah. Hmm. Measure her. What is it? Now you know I can't tell. Yes, you can. Now look and tell me. I can't. Do it yourself. Five feet, five inches. Don't you see? Oh, yeah. I see now. Now. That will do. I'm finished with her. I am not sick, and I do not want to stay here. That will do, Miss Grupa. No one has a right to shut me up in this manner. I'm single file. Uh, Brown undress. I think I shall not. 
I have never bathed in this manner in front of others. And it is too cold to bathe tonight. Why can we not wait till daytime when it is warm? Nellie Brown, either you remove your clothing right now or we will undress you. Very well. Miss Group. Still wet from the bath, and I should not like to sleep without. This is charity, and you should be thankful for what you get. But the city pays to keep these places up, and pays people to be kind to the unfortunates brought here. Well, you don't need to expect any kindness here, for you won't get it. Brown, get up. Drink this. What is it? It's something to help you sleep. What's in it? It's laudanum. Is that not an opium mixture? Yes, it will help you sleep. I'm not going to take opium. The doctor has ordered it, and you must take it. I will do nothing of the sort. Hello, Miss Brown. Refusing your medication. It is opium. I do not wish to take opium. Nearly all the patients take it. I'm not going to take it. I do not intend to lose my wits, even for a few hours. If you do not take it, I will put it in your arm with a needle. This smells horrible. I insist you drink it all the same. I thought of Robert Bruce, the warrior who led Scotland during the Wars of Independence. In his captivity, he found confidence from a spider building her web across the roof of his cell, undeterred by failure.
You may have my bread. Thank you kindly, but I will ask the nurse. Excuse me, may I have a second piece of bread? You have forgotten where your home is, but you have not forgotten how to eat. Thank you. Have a good mind, the stomach must be fed. I cannot eat this stuff. Patients wait in uh, transfer areas such as these until the staff can be allocated to move them uh, onto their daily activities. When was Blackwell's first opened? The facility was opened in 1839 and quickly overrun with patients. It has been in continuous operation since then. Blackwell's was designed by the famed architect Alexander Jackson Davis. The facility is constructed of granite, reflecting a feudal style of architecture. With its fortress-like appearance, it stands 600 feet long. With the proper funding and guidance, Blackwell's will one day be a utopian example of the most advanced treatment of the insane. We have worked miracles with the limited funding available to us. But uh, now you can see why we need additional funding. Gentlemen, please come this way. The snow came early. Many windows in the hall were broken, and the bitter cold air was unbearable. There was no heat. The nurses said it was one of the rules of the institution not to turn the heat on until October, and so we would have to endure it, as the steam pipes had not even been put in order. How did you sleep after your cold bath? I almost froze, and then the noise kept me awake. It's dreadful. My nerves were so unstrung before I came here, and I fear I shall not be able to stand the strain. You must keep your spirits up. You never know what is to come. And if you give up now, the good may arrive and you will not know it. <sighs> you are right, of course. Miss Tilly Mayard suffered more than any of us from the cold. I asked the nurses that we be given additional clothing, but they told me to shut up, that we had as much as they intended to give us. Matilda, I'll tell you who has taken your money. Who then? Who do you say has my money? Come close and I'll tell you. Who then, who? Please tell me so I can collect my money and pay my way out of this place. It is Nurse Group. You must go to her and tell her she's a thieving whore. And you want your money or you will gouge her eyes out. Go to her, go, go now and tell her. <coughs> Miss Group. Yes, Matilda? Miss Grady says that she is a thieving whore. <laughs> <laughs> Matilda, come here to me. <laughs> now, return to your radiator. The lawyers that stole your estate are in there waiting for you to give them a piece of your mind. Survey his hair with the most sweet after a bath. Miss Survey, his tiny hand wrapped around, I think. I have watched patients stand and gaze longingly towards the city they, in all likelihood, will never enter again. Fox, get away from the window. 
There's nothing out there for you. That I am sure. It means liberty and life. It seems so near. And yet heaven is not further from hell. Put out your tongue. Hold out your wrist. Look at my hand. I have done this again and again. Look at my hand. Stretch out your arms and work your fingers. Surely by now you have the results of such tests written down so- oh. Now stretch out your arms and work your fingers. What a mysterious thing madness is. I have watched patients whose lips are forever sealed in a perpetual silence. They breathe, eat. The human form is there, but that something which cannot exist without the body is missing. Who sent you here? The doctors? For what? Well, they say I am insane. Insane? Cannot be seen on your face. Give me that! No reading! Where did you get this? I found it. This belongs to the nurses. If I catch you touching the nurses' things again, I will send you to the quiet room. We're not allowed to read? No. Nothing that excites the mind to fevered thinking. There are women who have been committed here for excessive reading. For reading too much? That's ridiculous. It's too loud. They will hear you. Quiet, ladies! I couldn't help but wonder about the minds of the nurses. What it must have been like to constantly fear losing control over hundreds of mental patients. To fear losing their position. And to fear winding up in Blackwells as a patient themselves. Nellie Brown. Leona Fox. Why were you brought to this place? I caught my husband with our chambermaid. Before I could accuse him of adultery, he signed the papers to have me committed for life. Did you tell the doctors? My accusations are called delusional. Proof to them of my demented fantasies. But I saw them with my own two eyes. A woman has no voice when a man signs her away as insane. It is only after one is in trouble that one realizes how little sympathy and kindness there is in the world. It's an invitation to suffer. Let's go, everybody up, out the hall, come on. Nellie Brown, come with me. Where am I being taken? A judge is asking questions about you. So you caught the eye of Dr. Ingram. He wishes to speak with you. Do you wish me to stick out my tongue and hold out my hands? No. No, that will not be necessary this time. How are you sleeping? How would you sleep locked in here? I'm here to help you. Help me? Yes. 
Is there anything bothering you that you would like to talk about? Yes. In case a fire should break out in the asylum, all of the doors are locked separately, and the windows are heavily barred so that escape is impossible. A fire is not improbable, but one of the most likely occurrences. The nurses are expected to open the doors. Should the building burn, the jailers or nurses would never think of releasing their crazy patients. These women will be left to roast to death. Well, why don't you have it changed? I offer suggestions until my brain is tired. Well, what would you do, a proclaimed insane girl? Well, I should insist on them having locks put in as I have seen in some places that by turning a crank at the end of the hall, you can lock or unlock every door on the one side. Then there is some chance of escape. Now, every door being locked separately, there is absolutely none. What institution were you an inmate of before you came here? None. I never was confined to any institution. Well, where then did you see the lots you have described? I've seen them in places I was in. I mean, as a visitor. There is only one place I know of where they have those lots, and that is at Sin Sin. The only ones going through Sin Sin besides the inmates are the guards, lawyers, and reporters. <laughs> I assure you, I had never up to date been an inmate of Sin Sin, or ever even visited. whispers that those who attempted to get word out about the conditions in the asylum disappeared. I was increasingly fearful that my notebook would be discovered. Exactly as you expected. Mm -hmm. Irina, what is your age? Why, I am 14 years old. 14 years old? The doctors say you're 26, not 14. Mm -hmm. I am 14. The doctors know better, and they say that you're 26. It is not true. I am 14 years of age. You were 14 when the accident happened. What accident? What are you talking about? Irina, do you know where you are? Yes. I am on break at the garment factory. At the garment factory? That is where you had your accident. You fell off the balcony and, uh... Drop your head! It isn't true. I'm at the factory now. I'm on break. It happened 12 years ago. And that is when you came here. 12 years ago? Yes, you fell and became stuck at the age of 14, and uh, you were sent here to Blackwell's Women's Asylum in my care. No. It is not true. It is not true. <laughs> No, you're not at the garment factory. You're in an insane asylum. <laughs> no. 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 It is not true. Oh, okay. You push me around. I'm taking you to the quiet room. Let's go. Blackwell's had a stench to it. Partly from the kitchens, and partly from the on-site crematorium. It had become clear to me that Blackwell's was a dumping ground. 
a place for the city to rid itself of the overflow of the poor. Once committed, there was no way to exit except through the crematorium. What do you know about her? Not much. She's arrogant and a troublemaker. Is she responding to treatment? We have her on laudanum. Increase the dosage. Hello, Miss McGinnis. Hello, Miss Brown. Why were you brought here? I was sick. Are you sick mentally? Oh, no. I had been overworking myself and I broke down. Having some family troubles and being penniless and nowhere to go, I applied to the commissioners to be sent to the poorhouse until I would be able to work again. But they do not send poor people here unless they are insane. Don't you know there are only insane women or those supposed to be so sent here? There are 1,600 women on Blackwell's Island. I knew when I got here that the majority of these women were insane, but then I believed them when they told me that this is the place where they send all the poor who had applied for aid as I had done. Who are they? They're the women of the rope. They're considered to be the most violent women on the island. They live in the lodge. I myself shared the fear that everyone felt at the possibility of being sent to the violent ward. The mortality rate there was high. One day a woman was brought in who had a fear of being touched and an extreme fear of uncleanliness. Sit down while we get you set up with a room and a proper gown. I'm Nellie Brown. Margaret. Tilly Mayard. Put this on. What? Here? You left modesty in the outside world. In Blackwell's, we have nothing to hide. No, I will not. It is not dignified. That rag is soiled. I will not put that dirty thing. No! No! You stop it! No! Get your hands off me! No! 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 who stole her escape Take her to the retreat. by plunging a cook's knife into the heart of one of the nurses. She was immediately sent to the violent ward in the retreat. Is it Nellie Brown? Louise? It's so cold. Louise Shantz? Yes, yes, it's me.
They held Margaret naked in the cold bath all through the night. Help me carry her to her room. inject into or force so much opium on the patients that the patients are made crazy. A sure way to lose one's mind into the walls of Blackwell's forever. water. The very disease for which I am suffering and for which I need doctoring makes it necessary that I should not bathe in cold water. I do not want to go into that water. It is filthy and filled with human excrement and the burst eruptions of sick patients' skin. She's dead. How was she last night? These bruises on her cheeks. It looks as if she was in a fight. She was agitated, Doctor. I see. Obviously, she died of convulsions. Alma got the death certificate. I'm finished here. Margaret was cremated and put into a lead tin with only a number, like many hundreds before her. Another. I never learned to dance. It isn't that difficult. I said no. when one has music in one's spirit.
How do you do? I'm Superintendent Dent. How are you today? Stay back! She has a fever. What is this patient's name? Her name is Louise Chance. She doesn't belong here. They took her baby away at Bellevue Hospital. Louise? She is suffering from the cold and insufficient clothing. The nurses will be due. Take her away. So, what do you know of Louis Chance? And why do you care? I know that she is sane and does not belong in this place. I know that her English is poor and, and she has no way to speak her case to any justice. I see. And uh, how did you get here? I was committed as an insane woman in this asylum. I'm here without hope of release. And you think you're insane? No, I'm not insane. Of course, everyone says that. So you think Mrs. Chance is being persecuted? No, not persecuted, but... You said wrongfully committed here. Well, yes, but... So you're not insane. Ms. Chance is not insane. Is everyone wrongfully committed here, Ms. Brown? I can see that these patients need help. And you, Florence Nightingale, are going to help them all. Is that it? Delusions such as these can be cured with medication. They force me to drink the medication every night. It's not right. Oh, so now we're giving you the wrong medication. I don't recall seeing a medical degree on your admission papers. Did I miss something? You really must trust me, Miss Brown. We are the doctors here, not you. I am a doctor, and I want the best for my patients. I truly do. Tell uh, Dr. Kinnear to increase Miss Brown's nightly dose of laudanum to uh, 150 parts per thousand. Yes, Doctor. That should put your mind at rest. You see? I'm just trying the best I can. Have a good day. Go on. Mind your business. I want my book and pencil. It helps me remember things. You can't have it, so shut up. Give it back or I shall have to tell Dr. Ingram. You had no book or pencil. I just watched you place it in your apron. I advise you to fight against the imaginations of your brain. It's Benny! Benny, my husband, he's come to take me out of here! Stop it! That is not your husband! It's Benny! He's come to free me! Benny, I'm here! Oh, no, dear. Benny! Benny! He's, he's come to free me! Benny! No, no. Just leave her alone! Benny, take me out of here! Leave her alone! Benny, please! Stop! Stop. Inmates run in this asylum. I don't think so. You have brought this particular lesson on yourself. Miss School. Yes, Doctor. What happened to this patient? She was trying to escape, Doctor. She has a delusion that her husband is coming to take her out of Blackfells. How did she get those black eyes? 
she had the bruises when she was brought in. Now, they look fresh to me. Are you sure she had it when she came in? I will have a good talking with the orderlies. Get to the bottom of this. Make sure you do that. This is not a prison, Miss Group. It's a medical facility where we're trying to help people. To give them a better life. Is that clear, Miss Group? Yes, Doctor. As it turned out, Mrs. Cotter wasn't delusional. Her husband, Benny, had actually been doing everything in his power to take her out of Blackwell's, but was caught in bureaucracy. Eventually, he triumphed and won her release. What is it now, Miss Grove? One of the nurses took this from the patient, Nellie Brown. Let me have it. Has anyone seen this? No, Doctor. It's very organized and articulate for a mental patient. There is something else, Doctor. Well? A reporter is here asking to speak with Nelly Brown. A reporter. It is the fault of that meddling judge who sent her here. We can't deny him access to her. That would only create a sensational story. Let him meet with her. But make sure they're never out of close sight of the nursing staff. Yes, Doctor. And if she says anything, anything, that could be harmful to this institution. See that she's cut off. Here, put that on quickly. If you make it a practice of telling, it will be a serious thing for you. To my surprise, I was brought face to face with the first reporter I had ever worked alongside at the Pittsburgh Dispatch. I do not know this man. Do you know her? No, this is not the young lady I came in search of. I was mistaken. I thought she was somebody else, somebody I knew a long time ago. If you do not know her, you cannot stay here. Uh, one moment, senor. Do you speak Spanish, senor? No. What in places are you doing in here? It's all right. I'm after an item. Keep still. No, I'm afraid I do not speak a word of Spanish. It was Wilson, whose article I had anonymously responded to, that launched my career as a reporter. women in the institution. To protect herself and her sanity, she did everything she was told without complaint. I admired her strength and determination of will. Is now. 
from here. Everybody up, bath time, single file. Today. Don't fight them. They'll move you through faster. As much as I hated the baths, I would have taken another if it could have saved Tilly from hers. My heart ached to see Tilly Mayard go from recovered from her sickness when she had been brought to Blackwell's, to growing ever sicker as the days wore on. Tilly had changed so much for the worse that I was mortified when I looked at her. You must keep your spirits up. Lock people up and then freeze them. She has as much as any of the rest. She'll get no more. <laughs> Let her fall on the floor and it will teach her a lesson. Oh, you are cruel to treat her this way. Can't you see she is suffering and in need of care? She needs medical help. Miss Tilly Mayard. She's having a fit from the cold and the nurses are not sending for a doctor. They're doing nothing to help her. Please, calm yourself, Miss Brown. See that Dr. Kinnear is dispatched to Miss Tilly Mayard at once. There, see? She will be helped. Now please, calm yourself. I will not. The cold is so bad it sent Miss Mayard into a fit. I fear she will not survive. Well, I will see to these things at once. Why? Why am I being given special treatment? Why is the assistant superintendent so interested in my case in particular? We care about the treatment of all patients at Blackwell's insane asylum. And a Judge Duffy has been sending reporters to ask about you. Tell me, do you think you are insane? Yes, insane. I have watched insanity slowly creep over minds that had appeared to be all right. I curse all doctors, nurses, and public institutions for their treatment of people that have no advocacy. I will order Miss Grady to see that more clothing is given to the patients. Hand it over. You know the rules. No reading. It is only a book of psalms. Reading agitates the mind. How can a book of psalms be bad for the mind? Hand me the book. Hand it over. You did this to yourself! Take her to the quiet room. You're not human. Brown, go to the kitchen, get a meal, and take it to Mrs. Shan's room. 
At the kitchen, I was greeted with a spread of fresh fruits, marbled meats, and fine cheeses, food the likes of which was never shared with the patients. Mrs. Shans is ill. What about that? That's for the doctor. One hundred and fifty degrees, I think. <laughs> How high has your temperature ever run? Perhaps one hundred and one degrees. It's ninety nine degrees. Got you some food. <laughs> Do not want it. I know how you feel, but you need your strength. Did they hit you? Mm -hmm. I have gotten beatings from his group. I'm so cold at it. I will never see my son again. And if only I could die. Oh. Night, night, night. Please. Uh, no, please, there's nothing wrong with me. Now, now, dear Miss Shantz, we're here to help you. Hold her down. No. She doesn't need an injection. She just needs rest. You cannot inject her. She only had a mild coughing fit. Do not inject her. Miss Brown, enough. Get out. There, there. Please. Isn't that better? My kid, you've grown so much. Come dance with me. Eins, zwei, drei. Eins, zwei, drei. You have killed her. Take Miss Brown back to her room. Send Miss Strauss to the crematorium. I will make count the papers. You are a cruel and inhuman man. Why are you fighting me so much, Miss Brown? I'm trying to bring these people some relief. By killing them? It was not the intention. You have brought this up on yourself. Get off the grass! Tilly. Tilly, I dreamed of my mother last night. I think she may come today and take me home. I'm cold. No, don't touch me! I'm trying to warm you. You. You are a traitor. They're doing this to me because of you. What? You're trying to pass yourself off as me. Tilly, what do you mean? The reporters and the doctors that have come calling to see Nellie Brown are friends in search of me. But you are by some means trying to deceive them that you are me. Oh. Tilly, I am your friend. You are not my friend! I'm here! because of you!
Tilly. What have they been doing to you? They've been injecting you with opium. It's your fault. You trick me into singing so you can steal my voice. I can't stay in this place another day. <laughs> Did he shut up? Or I will help you to shut up. Tilly. Get away from me. There are 16 doctors on this island, and excepting two, I have never seen them pay any attention to the patients. How can a doctor judge a woman's sanity merely by bidding her good morning and refusing to hear her pleas for release? You have no right to keep sane people here. I am sane, have always been so, and I must insist on a thorough examination or be released. Several of the women here are also sane. Why can't they be free? They are insane and suffering from delusions. You're such a damn whore. It's a good thing for you that you are being transferred, or I would make you pay so well for remembering to tell Dr. Ingram everything. You forget everything about yourself, but you never forget anything to tell the doctor. I'm not sure I'll be able to sleep with Matilda up creeping about. She's probably up searching for somebody she wants to kill. Someone down I hit in the dirt. Paratiners is talking about you. What did they say? That you were to be shut off from all visitors because you talked too much out of turn. That's why we were sent to the violent ward to get rid of us. I puzzled over why they sent Anne Neville to the violent ward with me. I determined that it was the strength of her spirit her unwillingness to let the nurses break her will that had them focused on her. So they sent Anne, the strongest, and me, the loudest, to the violent ward to finish us. Why was I put in here? Shut up. I understand you've been having continuing trouble with uh, fevered thinking and hallucinations. I've had nothing of the sort. I'm as sane as anyone. You've demonstrated delusions of persecution thinking that the orderlies and nurses are against you, that they wish to cause you harm instead of help you, and that we, your doctors, are murderers. The things I have seen, the things I have told to Dr. Ingram, all of them are true. There are many truths here at Blackwell's. It is, after all, an asylum for the insane. Hmm? I do not need an injection. I am perfectly sane. Nearly all the patients here deny their insanity. Besides, you nightly medicate me with an opium drink. It is clear that in your case, you need something stronger. No, 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 Hold no, it still. no, 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 no. Let her be for a bit. Check back on her in an hour. You better alert the crematorium. Excuse me. What are you doing? Superintendent Dent? Yes. I am Peter A. Hendricks, Esquire. 
I am an attorney representing a family willing to take care of the patient known as Nellie Brown. Nellie Brown, of course, the amnesia case. Nellie Brown is unfortunately a very sick girl. And I cannot vouch for the safety of her health if she were to be released at this time. A Judge Duffy has signed an order transferring her into my custody. As you can see, it is official. Have a seat. We have hundreds of patients here at Blackwell's. It'll take a little time to locate her. I'm not going anywhere. What is the condition of Nellie Brown? I left Miss McCartan to take her to the crematorium. Open it. Open it! Step aside. Come, Miss Brown. Come back to us. Wake up! Come out of it! Miss Brown, I need you to wake up! We're ruined. Blackwells will be ended. I won't have it. Watch over her tonight. Make sure she gets plenty of water. At sunrise, send her into the yard. Have your nurses keep close watch over her till I call for her. Yes, sir. Cannot be seen on your face. <gasps> Brown, you're to come with me. Where am I going? A lawyer, Mr. Hendricks, is here to see you. <gasps> you are the strongest woman I have ever met. You are leaving. I will be back. No, you won't. You would have to be crazy to come back here. <laughs> I never want to see you here again. No hugging. This is Peter A. Hendricks, Esquire. He's an attorney. How do you do, Mr. Hendricks? Very well, Miss Brown. Thank you. Have a seat, Nellie. I uh, represent friends of yours that are willing to take charge of you if you'd rather be with them yes. than in this side. Yes. Don't you want to know who they are? No. Very well. I will leave you two to chat while I prepare your release papers. <gasps> so, Miss... Miss Brown. Miss Brown. Miss Brown. <clears throat> I am instructed to provide you with anything. <laughs> anything you need. 
on our journey back to the city. Something to eat immediately? Of course. Of course. I had looked forward so eagerly to leaving that horrible place. Yet when my release came, and I knew that God's sunlight was to be free for me again, there was a certain pain in leaving. How long was I in the madhouse? You mean, you don't know? Ten days. Could I pass a week in the insane ward at Blackwell's Island? I said I could and would. And I did. My story spread like wildfire, and spread not only across the US, but across the globe. I was a new celebrity. I was brown. I had proven that a woman could do the man's job of reporting by writing the most successful piece of news Joseph Pulitzer had ever published. But my only focus, my only care, was for the poor unfortunates left to wither and die in that horrid place. I was determined to shed light on their conditions. The nation is in a fit over your story. The mayor of New York has launched his own investigation, as have several members of the city council. This changes everything for you. Yes. Nothing will ever be the same from here on out. No, I expect not. Here. This is for you. It is a lot of money. It includes a bonus authorized by Pulitzer himself. I only want the standard pay. The rest should go to the orphans. Oh, yes. You've been summoned to appear before the grand jury about the conditions at Blackwell's. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. By the grace of God, I do. Please, state your name. Elizabeth Jane Cochran. Nellie Bly is my pen name. Can you tell us why you feigned insanity and entered Blackwell's Island Lunatic Asylum, posing as a person with mental illness? I entered Blackwell's Asylum with the intent of writing about and exposing corruption and abuse therein. So this was a paid job to sell newspapers? The job of a reporter is to tell the truth to the people. Truth that would otherwise not be known. At first, I took this assignment with the notion of telling the people what goes on behind the bars and locked doors of the asylum. But it was not long before I realized I had deeper reasons. Care to elaborate? The insane asylum on Blackwell's Island is a human rat trap. It is easy to get in. But once in, it is impossible to get out. Here were women, taken, without their consent, from the free world to an asylum and given no chance to prove their sanity. Your Honor, I move that the grand jury be taken on a tour of Blackwell's Island Asylum by Miss Cochran and see these events firsthand. It is so ordered. The grand jury is here. Yes. They must eliminate all traces of Brown's visit. We are in danger. Just go. But Just go. You must keep your questions short, as her health will not allow it. It's me. Nellie. Lily, do you know me? No. I do 
not know you. Should I? This is not how it was when I was last here. Have you made changes to the sitting room recently? The sitting room is always being changed, rearranged, and cleaned. Where is Miss Bridget McGinnis? She has been transferred to other quarters. What about Mrs. Fox? She's dying of paralysis and you cannot see her. And Anne Neville, where is Anne Neville? She has been transferred to isolation in Hall 7 due to some troubles. See that she is brought to us. Miss Anne Neville has been brought down. She's in the hallway. Send her in. They've been giving you medicine. I have to admit, I was fearful when they came for me just now. They said I was going to be examined by a crowd of men. It is a grand jury here to investigate Blackwells and how they treat us. All I want you to do is to tell the jury all that we have done since I was brought with you to the asylum. Miss Brown and I were brought here. The nurses were very cruel. And the food, it was too bad to eat. There was not enough clothing. And Miss Brown asked for more all the time. For when the doctors promised her more clothing, she said she would give it to me. Ever since Miss Brown has been taken away, everything is different. Nurses are very kind to us, and we are given plenty to wear. The doctors come and see us often. The Honorable Judge Henry A. Gildersleeve. Be seated. Has the grand jury reached a decision? We have, Your Honor. We find the Committee of Appropriation be provided $1 million for the benefit of the insane. In spite of the attempts to cover up what had been going on in Blackwell's, the grand jury found that I was telling the truth about all I had testified and found my testimony to be credible. I have the consolation that on the strength of my story, the million dollars per year provided was more than had ever before been given for the benefit of the insane. My dear girl, you have no idea what you've done. Oh, I know exactly what I have done. Blackwell's is not a place of healing. It is a rat-infested human death trap. It is due to the lack of means to secure good medical help. Blackwell's asylum was forced to choose amongst convicted prisoners from the nearby penitentiary to fill out its staff. 
You stood by as the nurses inflicted unspeakable cruelties upon the patients. Maybe being the superintendent, I was too busy to be fully aware of the atrocities that were going on in here. You knew. You knew that clothing meant for the patients was being stolen. You knew that women in here were being murdered. How can you say it was murder? I was trying to help these people. I was trying to help science move forward. Dr. Dent, you've made a very old mistake. Throughout history, there have been those who have allowed atrocities with a higher ideal as an end goal. I had no other goal than to help my patients. But I can see I cannot convince you of the insanity of your thinking. But I can stop you. The state is taking control of Blackwell's asylum. One of the conditions is that the facility be closed and torn down. Bye, Dr. Dent. The world was surprised by my story. A story written by a woman. A story that brought light to those that had no voice. Those that society had forgotten. And reminded us all that energy rightly applied and directed will accomplish anything. Just a girl born into a world when little girls barely matter. See, even women couldn't vote, their job just left them broke, sewing clothes and stirring batter. Well, Nellie didn't think it was right. She took up a pen to fight for women's rights, and she told the whole world what it's all about. And like a private eye, she went undercover Into a woman's mental ward See, her pen was like a sword She played sick to be among the others Because the patients, they weren't being treated right She stayed in there for ten long days and nights And then she told the whole world What it's all about In a race around the world, taking trains and ships on steam power. She sailed the China Sea with her little pet monkey, meeting kings and getting flowers. Arabia, Hong Kong, Singapore, in 72 days she was on American shores, telling the whole wide world. 